Hello and welcome to Bullish, I'm Alex Wilhelm. On the program today, we're talking about the digital divide, or put differently, the chasm in our society that separates those who have access to technology from those who do not. Now, if you're watching this, I presume you have broadband. But can you guess what percentage of American households actually do have broadband access? Well, as of 2014, it was 79%. And that figure is up from 20% in 2004. So in the last decade, broadband penetration has roughly quadrupled here in the States. In total, 84% of US households have some form of internet service. And that number is roughly flat compared to prior years. Now, not having broadband as a student or even a participant in the economy is difficult. And that problem is compounded in rural areas where kids are more likely to not have internet at home or at school. Now, broadband is only one part of the digital divide and schools have very limited budgets. But here's a data point. In the US, the current ratio of students to computers in most classrooms is four to one. Now, tech can be a low priority item, but teaching kids at school to use old technology in a rapidly advancing global economy is just plain stupid. How can our kids compete when the tools they use to learn are already out of date? Next up is Warren Barkley to tell us how to bridge that digital divide. Warren Barkley is the CTO of Smart Technologies, a public company best known for its intelligent whiteboard hardware. Previously, Barkley spent more than a decade at Microsoft, and before that, he was a teacher. His experience gives him a unique look into where technology, business, and education intersect. Please welcome to the show, Warren Barkley. Warren, my friend. Hey, how are you? Good, fantastic. Good to have you on the show. Thanks. Now, I know you're a Canadian. I am, I, yes. Yeah, sorry about that. But we use a lot of US data on the show today because our audience is mostly local. So we're sorry. Okay, that. that's fine. Before we really start, um, what are the key obstacles today that are holding schools back from getting kind of new tech into the hands of more students? I think that, you know, you, you think it's funding, you think it's those things. But the reality is that three quarters of kids who are going to high school today, they've got smartphones in their pockets. Sure. And so it's really a question of, do we let them use those devices and bring your own device? Why, why do we put those um, barriers so that kids can't bring their own device? So the BYOD movement we've seen in the enterprise can also apply to the classroom. Mm -hmm. like technology now to train you for the modern economy is a requirement. You can't call it something that's separate or ancillary. It's core. So it's a tool that you have to have in the toolbox. Yeah, absolutely. And you need the infrastructure to support it. And so okay. E-rate bills and Wi-Fi and things like that. That's the FCC is work they're doing right now. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that the thing that we have to understand is, is that trying to create schools that are like enterprises where we expect them to be able to update those devices and manage those devices, they just don't have the money to do that. And I don't right. think that's going to happen in the So future. you don't forecast increasing budgets on the school side to allow them to be more technically savvy on device management, device protection, security even. I think the, the thing is, is you, if you create the network infrastructure that actually protects those kids, then they can use those, those devices in appropriate ways at school that they have from home. You know, most homes have three different devices in those homes that attach the internet. 91% of kids touch the internet every day. And so... 91% of kids, uh, 0 to 18, or is that like 4 to 18? What's the that, range there? That's like uh, high school. Okay, yeah. high school. Okay. Yeah. Now, more in your wheelhouse, 28% uh, of teachers, according to another recent study, said they have access to smart whiteboard technology in their classroom today. That's right. I was surprised it was that high, but does that number feel high to you, low, or kind of in the middle? It kind of feels low, actually. Okay. It's just something like, um, in the UK, for example, over 90% of the classrooms have uh, smart boards in them, interactive whiteboards. In the US, it's almost 60%. Is that driven by people demanding it, or just people investing on the school district level into the classrooms? It's a little bit of both. You know, okay. I, I have uh, you know people come up to me telling me they did a bake sale so they could buy interactive uh, whiteboards and, and flat panels for their classroom, all the way to they, you know they eight, did the bake sale for that. That must be uh, the world's biggest bake sale. Were they selling uh, like danishes this big? I don't know how big. So those they are big budget items. You know, no, I, I think I mean you know when it's it, you do it room by room, it's ten thousand, it's five thousand, it's three thousand sure. dollars, and I think that most budgets um, per room is something around five thousand dollars. So on that point, are you seeing an increasing willingness? among school districts to pay more for technology? Are they increasing their budget size or just increasing it as time goes along? I think that what you see is, is you see very different things happening and, and it's, you know, as they say, all politics is local. Absolutely. So you, you see huge bonds in some places and not so huge bonds. And the way that schools are paying for this is through bonds. They don't have the, they don't have the operating expenses. So they're to be able borrowing to work. money essentially to upgrade their classrooms. Effectively. Is that a fair investment, do you think, or is that a little audacious on the fiscal side? I think they have to do that if they want to, if they, if they want to expose these kids to the technology that's really part of their workforce. In classrooms, you need to really provide the platform the infrastructure that's not only ubiquitous but agnostic and that's okay. one thing is, is that you see is that oh you know we're an Apple classroom or we're sure. a Microsoft classroom in fact 
you know, you can't really do that and move forward very well. Um, and so you really need to have agnostic type tools that allow you to play on any platform in right. any place. Well, thank God we're seeing technology be a little less siloed and a little more integrated. Absolutely. Uh, but before you go, I want an action item. I want you to tell us on the program what we can do either as a group, society, or a culture to bring more tech into classrooms more quickly. The biggest stakeholder in education are parents. Certainly. And so when you talk to your school board and you're talking uh, you know, to your teachers and things like that, you have to ask, is, does the classroom accurately reflect society? Are we doing things like stripping devices out of kids' hands when they go into schools? Do they yes, have Wi-Fi? Do they have laptops? Do they have these things? If it doesn't reflect society, then you're in a place where the kids think this is a weird place because I don't have all the tech that I have when I'm at home. Right. And so it's really about having that conversation with the board and, and really talking about where is our money going and how are we using it. And that, they are the biggest stakeholder. They hold the biggest club. So going to the classroom should not be going back in time. Yeah, absolutely not. All right. yeah. Thank you for coming, Mark. Thank you very much. Take care. Bullish airs every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, and you can find it here on TechCrunch.com.